And here starts the coveted lift video. The first thing we had to do was borrow someone's skidster to get the lift off of the semi truck. The lift weighed 1,400 pounds, so we could not pick that up, unfortunately. We would have tried, though. You don't need any special tools to move the lift posts around. Just stack them up on some wood and tip them up. We set both the posts up. It was just two of us. It was really easy. Actually, one person could set these posts up by themselves if they really had to. We just used leverage and we grabbed one of the ends and picked them up. It was really simple. Um, our lift has this top trough though and the trough is bigger than a normal top member on lifts. So we don't, we're not 100% sure of how we're gonna lift this up onto the, the tops of the posts yet, but one thing we are gonna do right now is route all the cables before we get to the next step. We encountered a couple of anomalies and one of the first ones was that this flip had actually popped off when we opened the package and it was laying um, in the cardboard. And this was actually, this shaft was recessed into the steel. So we had to take a couple of these bolts off and compress this so we could get this clip back on. Just a weird problem to have. In this clip, we're just routing the cables in the top trough. Honestly, we could explain what we're doing, but if you're buying a lift, the instruction manuals are very straightforward and very comprehensive. I recommend just reading the instruction manual, but we'll uh, talk about the areas that we had difficulties and just some of the things that we learned along the way. This top trough weighed approximately 200, 250 pounds. We carried it up these ladders. It was pretty precarious. We practiced it a couple times before we did it and we went very slowly. You're missing a bolt. Might have three of these. <laughs> Come on, give it a little smile. Oh my gosh. What's up? We ended up just walking up the trough in a pretty heroic manner. Got the job done. <laughs> and we screwed just a two by four into our freshly finished ceiling to make the job a little bit easier so I had something to hold on to. This ladder was really sketchy, so. That helped a lot, this ladder oh, It's solid. All right, good. No bolts yet. Can we do some pull-ups on it yet? Nope. Oh, okay. Maybe tomorrow. We ended up taking out some of the components from the top trough to make it a little bit lighter. There was this um, big hydraulic piston that pulls the cable. So this is like the main piston of the lift. We took this out and it weighed like 100 pounds, so it made it a lot easier to walk up the ladders. There was a nut on one of these. I don't know, I don't think there was. <laughs> I'll bring this one I, I, I think you're- Wait, look at the camera. You're delusional, man. You're, Doesn't this look smaller? And then I'll do this. <laughs> Whoa, now, now it's looking bigger. Here are the original size, what are these things called? <laughs> wedge anchors. Uh, <laughs> this is the original size wedge anchor that Benpack sent with the lift. And what, what, how long are these, six inches? Something like that? Five. Five inches. Uh, we decided to get a similar spec 10 inch uh, wedge anchor bolt made by Confast. The pullout strength on both these bolts is 5,000 PSI per bolt. And each of these posts takes six bolts. So 30,000 pounds per post. So the pullout strength is pretty strong. But we went with the longer ones because we poured these added these new slabs deeper so they're you know over 24 inches deep so we have a lot of depth that we can use here and our theory is that if you have six of these submerged it would be really hard to pull them out because they would lock into the longer deeper holes we're gonna get the lift exactly where it needs to be so we're just gonna move it around a little bit measure make multiple measurements we've had to make you know, redundant measurements on everything we've done here. Normally they say measure twice, cut once. I think we've measured like 10 times and... We're not even making any cuts.
sick bossa nova. Uh, are we going outside, outside? Uh, no, no, inside, inside. All right, just bump it on the outside edge. Bump it. I'm going to go up here. Yep, and go out a little bit. Right now we're just putting in some of the anchor bolts and they're down here and we're putting in a couple of them and then getting the dimensions right with each of the posts when we're doing that. So we measured, you know, the distance in between uh, these posts and we measured the distance in between the posts up top. And now we are, like I said, putting in some of the bolts and just getting the dimensions rock solid before we start torquing everything down. For the technique on these 10 inch anchor uh, wedge bolts, we're using a Bosch hammer drill and a 10 inch bit. So it's a, it's a three quarter inch bit and they're three quarter inch anchor bolts. And we're purposely going down deeper than we need to. It's really important to get all the dust out of these holes when you're drilling them. So we got all the dust out I'm using just this uh, tube that we um, tied to our shop back. And it works really well to clean the dust out from from the bottom of the holes. Oh, additionally, we finished the drywall, the insulation, and then we painted the whole shop. So it looks pretty cool. And then we installed these LED lights everywhere. This is a very well lit facility now. Well, when we have cars up, we'll probably have dark spots underneath the cars. So we have some shop lights that we're just gonna be running around with extension cords, but we have a lot of outlets in here that we uh, wired to separate circuits. We have 240 volt, uh, two receptacles of that, and then we have a bunch of 120. The worst thing about this camera is every time I hit the power button, you know that I, I turn it on. So there's no tricking you, you know? It's like, is it on right now? Can you tell? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, dude, it's time to make some moves around this pole. I'll just, I'll just sit here and do nothing. Yeah. Just, uh, Good. Keep this is just a quick instructional how to using an adjustable ladder. Does it keep going higher? Is it all the way up? How do you know it's too far? It's, it's too far. It's too far. It's gonna fall off. Woo! Got it! in the bolts that connect the trough to the post so that we have a little more flexibility in adjusting the base. If only he brought the required tools, which is a 16 millimeter adjustable wrench. Did you just say a 16 millimeter adjustable wrench? <laughs> I did. What does that mean? <laughs> Dude, that's it. <laughs> that's easy. 
The manual says you should use a forklift or a crane to move that arm up before you install the motor, and then it talks about how heavy the motor is. But if you've already installed that top trough, this is a piece of cake. You're totally conditioned at this point. Just crush it. It's the moment of truth. Will the lift work? Uh, don't try this at home. We got a open circuit. I mean, no we don't. What could, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? We have a temp up uh, just in this odd configuration to verify that everything works before we uh, close everything up and get everything mounted the way we want it. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll stand back here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, maybe we should use the Audi. What do you think, James? Why not? Nah. <laughs> we'll wait till next week. Right? After it's been safety checked yeah. many more times. What could go wrong? Lead the way. It's the next day and I wired up the connections safely now. I used an enclosure that I got from Home Depot and some conduit sections. Just to give you a better idea of the wiring, this is the incoming power from a 240 volt receptacle. We literally just made a wall plug for this back there. This is a cable that we bought at Home Depot and we just stripped it back and added power that way. This box came on this motor. Here is the original switch and here is the motor starter. We bought this thermal disconnect switch and it actually screws right into the terminals of the starter. One problem that I ran into is this just didn't fit inside of our box. And the cover has a little bit of a, a little bit of room, but when the cover was on, it pressed these buttons. So I spaced it out using these little pieces of plastic and it prevented it from happening. And then I also spaced out the screws a little bit. So I had redundant safety measures uh, preventing it from happening even if these pieces of plastic somehow fell off. And if anyone wants a diagram showing how to wire these devices together, just add a comment below this video and I'd be more than happy to help you out. And also in the manual, it suggests a power disconnect. And a power disconnect would be like a, a device that you could pull out of a socket to kill the power to the whole device or a light switch style disconnect. Instead, we literally have our panel right there, which is you know 10 feet away and in viewing distance of our lift, Therefore, we're just gonna use that as our power disconnect. On a similar note, we updated the breaker for the lift. The original breaker was 30 amps. We made it a 20 amp breaker. And the purpose of that is so that if the lift was ever operating outside of its range, right now it's full load amps is 13, but say if it's spiked or something, it would trip at 20 amps. If we set it to 30 amps, the motor could become fried and the breaker would never know. Therefore, we downsize the breaker so it shuts off the way it's supposed to and protects the device. And if anything ever happens, we can just run over there. It's in viewing distance, hit the breaker and shut the whole power off the lift. I can't contain my excitement. I've been waiting for this lift for a very long time. I think basically my whole life. I can finally check out everything underneath my car. For example, looks like we got some leaking transmission fluid here. Gas tank. Oh, this is awesome. I have all this access now. So cool. I 
I designed the entire garage so that the bottom of this Forerunner would be six feet off the ground, and that's exactly what it was. It was six feet exactly at the maximum position. And some of that's coincidental, but it was good to see that I got the vertical distance that I wanted out of the lift. This Forerunner weighs approximately 4,500 pounds, so this was a good stress test on the lift. Obviously, we're gonna be doing a lot more safety checks. We're gonna be looking over this thing very regularly, especially in the first couple weeks here. A couple of problems we encountered. Here is one of them. These springs pull these passive safety devices out of the way when cars are being lowered. And this spring was completely mangled when we got the lift. So it didn't even work. There was no tension, so we had to pull this spring out we just put a zip tie around it to give it a little bit more tension so it pulls the safety device out of the way when the lift is going down. We encountered a problem with this wire right here and this pulls the actual hard stop out of the way. This is the thing that normally carries the car when it's, when it's resting in a lifted position. And this wire was bound up in the back corner over there and it was causing an excessive amount of tension on here and it was basically making this whole thing bind and not get out of the way. Our remedy there was to free the cable up. We were sent the wrong fittings. This is a 3 ace or something compression or flare fitting. It's a JIC hydraulic flare fitting and this is a quarter inch and we had to order this adapter piece in between. Therefore our line ended up kind of bowing out because we added some extra length in here. And the same thing on the other side, we were sent the wrong fittings. So this is a 3 8 JIC flare fitting, which is a hydraulic fitting. I think this is, these are all stainless. And we had to order this adapter here to go from the quarter inch coming out of the pump to the 3 8 going to the hard line. And again, that line ended up with a big bow in it. And our future plan is, is just to get the 90s that come out of here in the right size that go right to the hard line. And we were just uh, pinched for time, so we just found the fastest solution possible to get this thing up and running. This is an orb style fitting, and it's new to me. You can find it on any hydraulic website. I encountered a problem with one of our bolts. It kept pulling out of the concrete, so we just had to get an extended length socket, a deep socket, and it ended up catching just a little bit later than the rest of the bolts. It might be hard to see this looking behind me, but we pulled a transit leveling tool on the lift just to make sure that it was as straight as possible and it measured very, very accurate. We shimmed the entire base of each of the posts and made it as plumb as possible using uh, just levels and then the transit showed that we had it very, very close. And probably overkill, but <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna show it right now. I'm not gonna show that part of the video, but we uh, went to all lengths we possibly could to make sure that we installed this in you know, the most rigid, best way possible.